In the previous video on the topic, we reviewed how three older Radeon cards run the Outer Worlds. The game should still be free until April 11th on Epic Games, so you should consider going over there and grabbing a copy. Back to our current video, this one however will focus on how three GeForce cards run the game. The GTX 770, a 2GB card just like the R9-270 featured previously, but with a bit more GPU power to it. The GTX 960 4G from MSI with a performance similar to the R9-280 from earlier video, but with 4GB of VRAM instead of 3. And the GTX 1050 Ti, this one is mostly to get a baseline for how the car performs to be used in a future episode. Just like the previous video, we'll run the game at low settings at 3 resolutions, 1080, 1600 by 900 at 720. The test system is the same Z230 workstation from HP, same i7-4770 equivalent Xeon, and the same 32GB of DDR3 RAM running in dual channel at 1600MHz. The CPU however ran without hyperthreading, and in a follow-up video, we'll see if that turned out to be a problem or not. Ok, let's get to it. I first tested the GTX 770, and while the video card made it to the menu, it crashed as soon as it loaded the save file. This is why at 1080 resolution the Kepler card manages 0 FPS. The GTX 964G provided what felt to me like a good experience with an average FPS of 46. My test consists in a back and forth run between the unreliable and the town walls, and the 1% loss comes from the cemetery area outside of the city. The vegetation there dropped the average in the 30s, and this is felt in the 1% loss. The tiny GTX 1050Ti managed to stay close to the 960 with almost identical performance. At 1600x900 the Kepler card still refused to run. I initially thought that the crash was related to the amount of VRAM available and hoped that reducing the resolution would help. It was not meant to be. The Maxwell card however gets a boost in performance and the average now reaches 56 FPS and the 1% low stays in the mid 30s. As mentioned in the previous video, it is this latter metric that becomes relevant in larger outdoor areas, so keep an eye on it. And finally, the Pascal card proved that the power from the PCI slot alone is enough to reach a similar performance like the GTX 960. Seeing the Kepler card crashing at 720 resolution made it clear that it will not run this game, much like it did not run Resident Evil 4. Both the GTX 960 and the GTX 1050 Ti managed an average close to 70 FPS and 1% lows of 41 and 37 respectively. The game runs fine at this resolution and both cards managed to push the CPU usage percentage well into the 60s, occasionally going even higher. And despite running the CPU without hardware threading, the game is still GPU bound. Ok, let's get some conclusions from this. The reason I wanted to run the GTX 770 was to find out if the performance of the R9-270 was caused by the amount of VRAM. What I found instead is that the game, much like Resident Evil 4 Remake, requires hardware support for DirectX feature level 11.1. The GCN architecture has it, unfortunately Kepler does not. The other interesting comparison is between the two newer GTX cards and the R9-280, featured in the previous video. As seen on the screen, despite being of somewhat similar performance, the Radeon seems to be consistently outpaced by the GTX cards. The GTX 1050 Ti will get to run this benchmark again in the following installment of the series, that focuses on the CPU side of things. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. As for this one, we're done. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll see you for